Mary West uh, coming at you with a bit more of a positive tone this week. It's been a very good finish off to the week across the space. Uh, so let's just jump in and dice up this market and see what we can see. So we should just have a look at the news that pr propelled us higher. Uh, one of my eagle-eyed watchers did point this out a few weeks ago. Uh, this would have an effect on the market, and so it's proven, at least for today. So Kazatom Prom has lowered its uh, uranium production expectations. Uh, I'd, I'll put um, I'll put the links to some of these articles uh, in the description, so you can have a bit of a read yourself. Um, but you know, this stuff is all you know very helpful for the market dynamics, of course, because Kazatom <laughs> Prom is obviously. Uh, the largest producers so if they're not producing as much that only adds to that flavor of uh of undersupply i'll start that again the other thing i'd suggest you do here is just take a look at market watches article I, once again i'll put the link in uh read through everything that's coming from people who are not tied to the uh uranium sector okay because you, <laughs> reporting by people who've got vested interests and you know you can see it right because there's certain accounts and certain channels out there that just non-stop pump this sector you know regardless uh, i think we all know who that is um but take the take the unbiased view okay just just take the 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 the, the non-vested interest view right the, the agnostic over, um whole overview so market watch isn't isn't a bad one either to just have a bit of a flick through and there's another one here from um pardon me, from Financial Times. These are the sort of sources I'd have more of a look through um, as opposed to looking at, you know, like I said, um, anything that's got a vested interest in, in making the price go up. So I'll put a link to a few of these articles for your reading. I'd suggest you do read them. They're not very long. It should take you about 30 seconds. Uh, but just bring yourself up to speed with the developments in the market. Okay, so just starting out here with the URA, let's look at some of these boxes that have been ticked. So obviously big volume that's great well above the 50 period uh moving average volume so that was good that there, there has been some, some participation in this rally we had this little gap in the market but you know just here but that was that's now well and truly been filled in so that's all ticked off as well and it looks like we've got quite a nicely formed little bullish trend channel eventuating here so that's quite good uh now you know now that we've sort of ticked those boxes off off the low uh, we now have to look for the markets going back the other way because, you know, one swallow doesn't make a summer. One big up candle like this, um, well, it's great, of course. Uh, we need to see more, okay, to be confident that we've got a, a major low in here, okay? So what do we need to see? What are the markers that we want to see moving forward? Well, we've got this gap here now, okay? So we've got one back the other way. I, personally, I'd like to see this filled in sooner rather than later. Okay, because once it's filled in, it's done. We don't have to worry about it. Um, it's not a, a factor moving forward. Now, a lot of people might suggest that gaps are relevant. Um, I don't believe that because statistically, I think you can prove that they are relevant. Um, however, you know, it, what we what we would ultimately like to see is perhaps this just push up a little bit more. If this gap can correspond with a 50% a retracement or even a 61% retracement, which means the market would have come all the way up here, that would be even better. Uh, so personally, yeah, that that sort of scenario for me would be great if the market just just came up here and maybe tag that and just came down here and filled that in. That that would be good. But look, nothing says it has to be filled in. It's just that if it's not filled in, if it remains open, it just becomes mm, a bit of a target moving forward. So I'd prefer that to be closed. But look, even if we peaked out here today and then just just came back down some way, shape or form like that, I mean, that, that wouldn't be a bad thing, even though, yeah, we'd lose this little trend channel, but that's a very short-term thing. I wouldn't be putting too much stock into that. But just to get rid of that gap, maybe just come back and test some support because you need building blocks, okay? If you go like that, you're going to go like that. You don't want that, not in my opinion. What you want is a nice, steady build-up of trending price up and down up and down up and down like that 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 is how you build a sustainable trend you don't build it by you know big single story skyscrapers like that so where we're sitting look we are still in a downtrend this is the best downtrend channel i can draw at the moment uh you know and down and trend channels trend lines can be subjective so i don't think we want to put too much stock into it other than um you know just 
just keeping it as a rough sort of guide about visually what's going on. So, you know, what else would I like to see here? Well, like I've mentioned before, I'd like to see this retrace. Uh, and retrace on not much volume, okay? So if we started getting retracements that were more akin in volume to these sort of areas, a light volume retrace, meaning that there's not too many sellers out there, uh, and that, you know, certainly then a lift in volume if we started hitting those more crucial retracement areas, well, that would be that would be good. That'd be another good sign. So a light volume retracement, that, that, that would be uh, a very good sign that this can sustain. So there's a couple of interesting areas lining up here. First here, we've just tagged into the 50 of uh, of this move. Okay, so this move down, this is 50% back. So I would, you know, it's the 50% levels and the 60, the, the retracement zones just tend to attract a little bit of natural resistance. Okay, now if we just take the fixed range volume profile of all the way down here, I'll just sharpen this view up a little bit. You can see that here we are starting to run into a little bit of a volume node here. Okay, so you know this is not unsurprising. It, it would have been tied around this structure, uh, but you can see here we've got an even bigger one up here at the 61.8. So that would be the next point of call for me. It would be this this 61.8 zone that that ties into that volume node and all the work that we did through here. Okay, so we still got a little bit of a way to go, uh, but we're just looking for the markers on the way up that that help us to identify a, a more sustainable trend. And so that also, that 61.8 also represents the, the point of control, the, the main volume point of all the way down here. So getting to the other side of that would, would certainly be a good sign moving forward. Uh, but there's there's a few more things we've got to get through here. So, um, you know, there is, if you look back through here, there's a little bit of a, okay, so this, this volume profile here, this one, that is related to this entire move. Okay, so that is the volume profile for the whole move down to see where the volume transpired. So you can see here that we're also hitting into yet another little pocket of uh, volume, which is obviously tied into that. So, but just above here, there's there's a little bit of a lack of market acceptance before we start to run into um, the main point of control. All right. Now, when we look at this entire move down, the 50% of the way back overlies, overlies the 61.8% of the way back of this move, okay? So the large move. So there's a lot of confluence just on this point. So this to me, this sort of $28, 24 25 that remains, and this point of control, that remains the, the, the key for me moving forward. So, you know, ideally for me, I would like to see the market progress like this, possibly turn away from it and then get through it, you know, up to challenge this. That would be the, the markers, the areas, and the way that I would like to see the market begin to move out of here to, to defeat this overall downtrend that we're still in. Okay, so we are still in a bearish posture. Okay, um, even though it feels good to have this one candle, it is only one candle. All we're doing here is uh, laying out the plans and, you know, drawing up a new list of signs that we'd like to see the market do to give us more confidence that the bottom is in here. Just moving over to CCJ now. So this was the first measured move that we're looking at. So we got to target here. Cool. So that, that's a box tick. That that just sets up the structure of the trend, okay? Because it's just a higher, higher, and higher low effectively. It's a retracement with an external move, a move that goes external of the of the first swing. Uh, and then of course in the process of that, we also just filled in this little gap we had. So we can take that off the table. That's that's kind of you know, that, that's why I like the gaps filled in. You don't have to think about them. So this would have been the next measured move set up. But we never we never really got a retracement. I didn't quite get there, okay? Um, got close. But now we'd be, we'd be looking at that as a measured move sort of area, okay? So we can get rid of this now. But, you know, any move back down here, uh, like like so, into this area, that, that would represent to me uh, the next good buying opportunity uh, on a short-term basis. So just looking, you know, we've got the, the good daily volume. So that that's also another box ticked. Um, but you know, today's candle's not ideal in terms of it's just a doji. It's not a, it's not like a big strong up candle, which is um, you know, more like this one, which we'd prefer to see. It's just a doji. Okay, so effectively on the day that the market really hasn't made much progress on the day. Uh, of course, it is higher from its previous close, which is good. Uh, but, you know, it would have been better to, you know, open low, finish high sort of thing that the buyers sort of remained in control of the stock all day. But that, that hasn't happened, sadly. 
And so we highlighted this little area last week as being a potential point of resistance, and so it's proving so far. Okay, so we still need to do a little bit more up here. I think just we just need to get above this retracement zone. So just looking at the move down, just where we sit here, obviously we're in an area of, of, of very low market acceptance, which is not surprising because this obviously area came when the market was getting blown apart. So there's not a lot of volume here. Um, certainly we've just got a bit of an area of volume rejection here. Okay, so these wicks here where the, where the buyers initially held the capitulation, now we're back, they're just wicking through it. So I, I kind of read that as, you know, this should just push up at least into sort of test this. You know, that's that's what I would think. But same thing again, okay? So we're going to get the building blocks of a good rally. You need the pullbacks, okay? You need the steady building of, of price. So right now, can you read much into this? It, it's it's great. I mean, look, at, don't get me wrong. It's a great candle and it's a good outcome, but it is only one candle, okay? So well, what would be the plan with this one? Ultimately, we want to recapture this main pivot high, okay? But there's, you know, there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before you can... You can think about getting up there i'd suggest um that yeah the, there's nothing to say that this doesn't you know give up again and just start maybe it starts going to a range like this okay so this move is finished uh and then it starts ranging that that's certainly a possibility across the space but we'll wait and see but i mean you know look your pumpers will be online today going Whoosh, you know it's i, I doubt that's going to happen that that'd just be that my read, okay. I don't I don't think the market's going to move like that. It could, of course, but I don't think so. Uh, like I said, building box guys, you just want to see steady progression up, okay, with with healthy pullbacks. You know, the market needs time to digest the move. So right now we've got this trend going up. There hasn't been much of a pullback on it. So we we just wait. We need to see this RSI test this 60 and get on the other side of it, and then a subsequent pullback hold 40. If we can do that. That will look pretty good for this being sustainable. So I think we've covered the, the 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 guts of what we need to cover here. But you know, let's just run through some of these names a bit more quickly because it, all the same stuff applies. Right? They all go hand in hand. So this one, you know, we had this little move down here. You know, we were resisting the 50. Now we're on the other side of it. So this is U R and M, of course. So yeah, that's all right. The volume's good. I mean, it, look, we're above the 50 period uh, moving average, but you need more volume. You know, the same as everything else. You've got to go back to each pivot and look at the retracement zone. So where's the next point of interest? It becomes this is the next area to defeat. Simple as that. If we get on the other side of that, uh, what have we got next? We've got the major pivot, okay, a little bit further above that would come in here and test the bottom of this structure. Once again, this this is kind of not perfect. I, the way this sort of... It, it's this was inconclusive, even though we've got a, a bit more of a conclusive candle today. But once again, I would still prefer to see it doing that. Okay, uh, and maybe it just does this. Okay, maybe the perfect scenario is it comes in here. Okay, this is the the next retracement point. It comes in here, all right, and then the retracement off that will equate to. Uh, if I just grab this tool. The retracement of this uh, equates to you know fifty percent of that. Okay, so it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just time this up. Let me just fix this up. So, you know, I think you get the general point, right? That if it came up here, that you would want it to come back into this, test all that, and then go on. Okay, same thing. So, yeah, you can do this exercise yourself. The building blocks remain the same, okay? It just becomes about the retracement points off the pivots and defeating each one as we go. All right, but this one had a gap, which is now closed, so that's good. We don't have to worry about that. But uh, the same thing, okay? We need to see this volume maintained. Look, it's going to drop off a little bit, but same thing. If we get a low volume retracement uh, and a hold and then another push, that's that's kind of the first sign that this can be a start of a sustainable trend. Okay, just moving over here, you are in J. Same thing, right? Um, it's pretty straightforward, right? This is the trend structure. Okay, so we just need to beat this pivot. We need to do that at the very least just to start to break this. Okay, but so we're not there yet. Good good volume candle, no doubt about it. Uh, a little gap in the market. So, you know, tick it off. You know, that becomes the next one, and that becomes the ultimate point of what we need to defeat. So, you know, getting through this retracement would also lead us to getting above this pivot, which would be great going hand in hand with that. But we've got a bit of distance to go yet, guys. So let's just keep the, the champagne corked up for the moment. Even just coming here briefly to look at this 
Red Devil style, you know, we've got the MAs, you know, the, the, the three shorter ones come together. And, you know, they're turning up to attack the top one. So, you know, obviously that would be a good sign because the only way that these moving averages can get above these these sort of uh, longer ones is that price has to develop enough above them, okay, to drag the averages up. Uh, like I said, we've got one good volume bar here. We need more, okay? We just, we, we don't have enough um, to be able to put a flag in the ground and say that, that that's a sustainable trend, okay? We've got to start, but I don't know if it's enough to put the kids' college fund into just yet. Um, hopefully you haven't done that. Um, so, you know, we just watch these moving averages. If they can all converge and turn up, then that just means that prices drag them further on, which is which is great. That's what we want. Okay, now this this is the the, the, the 200 day simple moving average on a daily, and this is the, uh, sorry, the 50, and this is the 200. So we do have the old death cross here. Um, some people, the, 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 the golden crosses and death crosses are interesting. Look, for bulls, uh, death crosses mean that that's just price history and it's, it's irrelevant. <laughs> okay, but golden crosses, of course, are hugely relevant and bullish. Look, this is the longer term view and it's the same thing. We just need price to, to grind so we can get back above this, okay, and turn this back above the 200 day. So there's what this is illustrating to me is there's a fair bit of water to go under the bridge yet. So I think that's it, guys. Um, what all we've really got is a good start across the market, okay? But, you know, the, the problem after such a vicious sell-off is, is often there's a lot of false dawn. So we just need more sustainable volume. Uh, we need price to grow steadily, not rapidly, I would suggest. Uh, and that would be the ingredients for continuing trends that, that can be sustainable. So just be aware that, you know, we are still in a downtrend in the market, okay? So just because we get to those retracement areas, you know, that, that could attract levels, uh, interest levels from people who are looking to get out of their stocks because they've held through the low, but they no longer want to be in the sector. And there's a lot of people like that out there for sure. Uh, or there could be people, traders, looking to initiate shorts. So each of those areas have to be defeated and each of those parties have to be taken out. That won't happen instantly. That's going to take some time. So uh, just remain patient. Uh, keep yourself grounded enjoy today enjoy this week it's been a good week um, it's going to feel a little bit better coming off the low but now just mentally prepare yourself for the retracements uh, and just keep your expectations anchored on how much time is going to have to elapse before we can start to get some more sustainable progress uh, thanks for watching see you next week bye for now